Now that we have the deer skinned out, we want to start the caping process. So to get started, we need to take a measurement, which the first measurement we're going to take is the eye to nose measurement, which is going to be from the front corner of the eye to the center of the nose pad. And to do that, we're going to use the calipers to get a very accurate measurement. So we want to push this right onto that front corner eye bone and come to the center of the nose pad and just push in slightly. Now we want to lay this down and take a tape measure and measure the two points. That's going to give us eight and a half inches. So our eye to nose measurement is going to be eight and a half inches. That's going to be important to remember when we pick out our form that we select a form that has an eight and a half inch eye to nose. The other two measurements that we will be taking later on are going to be the B and C measurement, which is the neck area, but we have to skin the deer we have to cape the deer first. If we would take that measurement now with all this hair on it, we'd get an inaccurate measurement. So we want to take that measurement after we have it skinned off so we're directly on to the neck meat itself. I'm just going to set these items aside. Now we want to start the actual caping process. So to do that, we are going to start by the nose and the mouth area. We're going to balance the deer on his horns and we want to start skinning right along the gum line on the upper and lower jaw and start separating the skin from the gum line. You don't want to cut into this gum line here. You want to keep this because we're going to need that for later on in the mounting process. So we are just going to come cutting right along the bone, leaving plenty of this gum line attached to the skin. If we get too much skin here, we can cut that off during the mounting process. But for right now, we want to keep as much skin as possible of this gum line skin attached to the skin. Cut right through these, the navel area. Make sure that when you're cutting through the nose pad, you don't come in and cut through this inner nostril detail area. You want to keep that intact, so we're going to cut right around that. As you can see, this is that inner nostril area right in here. We're coming right behind that. We do not want to cut into that. It's going to make more work later on if we do. I'm just going to keep skidding right down along the skull. Now that we've connected to the back corner of the jaw, I want to start on the lower area, the lower jaw. So I'm going to again repeat that process of cutting right along the bone, keeping this gum line attached to the skin. It's especially important that you keep a lot of this gum material attached to the skin if you're doing an open mouth deer because you're going to want to, you're going to need that to tuck everything in. Now that we've skinned down both sides to the back of the jaw, we don't need all of this if it's going to be a closed mouth deer. If it was going to be an open mouth deer, we would want to keep all of this. But because this is closed mouth, we can cut through some of this. We don't need all of it. We'll leave about an inch of it on there. And this is as far as we're going to go with this part of the, skin, the caping process, just to the back of the, of the jaw area. We're going to repeat the process on the other side, and then we're going to start caping it from the back. If you were to keep skinning from the front, you're going to start running the risk of getting too close to this tear duct area. And we don't want to do that because it's easy to cut through and damage it if you're coming from the front. So we want to do that from the back side. So now we are going to flip the deer around. 
And the incision that we're going to use today to remove this excess meat and get the skull out is going to be, it's called the Y incision. And the Y incision is basically, we're going to be making a cut from the corner of the ant antler butt, right? We're going to be following along a hair pattern. We're going to come right from the corner of the antler butt. On this side, we're going to come from the corner of the antler butt and meet up from our other incision and then come right down the back. That's the Y incision. We could also do a T incision, which would be a straight cut, antler butt to antler butt, and then we would make a line down the back. Or we could do the seven incision, which is antler butt to antler butt, and one continuous line right down the back. But we're gonna do the Y incision. So to do that, we wanna start lining up our hair pattern. All deer have a hair pattern back here. So is it, we can, this one's a little bit burly, it's a little wet, so it's hard to see it. So we're going to come from the corner of the antler, cut in, and we're just going to come down to where that line stops. Now that we've made our first incision, we've made it from the corner of the antler, right down to the center point of the skull. We're gonna repeat the process on the other side. So we're gonna come from the corner of the antler, cut right down, and meet up with that last incision, right like so. Skin this back a little bit so we can see where we are. Now we want to complete the Y incision by making an incision right down the back to where this meat stops. This is a pretty old buck. It has very, very thick skin. It's in the, the prime of the rut right now. So it's taking a little bit more effort to get through the skin versus an earlier season deer. All right, now that we've made that incision all the way down to where the meat stops, we can start skinning back. And this is the case in Shizen as well too. A lot of times deer are skinned out and they're split all the way down the back, but we don't want to do that. We want to keep the sewing down to as minimal as possible, so we're using a case incision, and this is helpful for that. You would probably still have to make this Y incision even if it was split all the way, but we're not going to split it all the way in this case because we want to cut down on the amount of sewing that we have to do in the mounting process. So I'm just going to keep following around the neck, cutting the skin. And now as you can see here, we're coming to the ear butt. And we, it's important that we don't just cut through this ear butt right here. We want to come down into the skull area, right where this ear butt meets the skull and cut through that. You wouldn't want to come through right here because you're going to lose all of your inner ear detailing. So you want to follow along the base of the skull, cut right through that ear cartilage. As you can see, we've just removed it. And that's now the ear butt has been separated from the skull. We're going to repeat that same process on the other side. Pull this skin back. Take our scalpel. Cut right through. Just disconnected again that ear butt from right along the skull. Now that we have most of the skin separated, we still have to get on the underside of the neck, but in order to do that, we want to start removing the skin from around the antler butt. So we're going to start on this antler butt first, and we're just going to take our scalpel, pointing upwards, 
You're just gonna skin right around that antler butt. You wanna be scraping right along the skull. And we're kind of pulling and cutting as we go. As you can see, we're detaching the skin from around the antler butt. Work on the other side a little bit here. Again, I'm just following right along the antler butt, going right around, cutting and pulling as we go. Now that we've come pretty much three quarters around the front side, we are gonna come from around the back side and repeat that same process. So we are going to continue cutting around the antler butt. And now during this removal process of the skin from around the antler, this scalpel blade just broke. That's a very common thing to have happen when you're trying to remove this. So it's something you need to be aware of and be careful with. These are just 22 scalpel blades, so we're just going to put on a brand new one. And it's important to make sure that you get the other fragments out, just so you don't cut yourself during the skinning process. But that's a pretty common problem to run into. You're probably going to go through a couple of the blades during the caping process, just because they need to be nice and sharp, and they're going to dull up, and they might break removing these skin from around the antlers. So we're just going to continue now, coming right around. We're just about back to the point where we started from the front. I'm going to pull on this a little bit. All right, now we have completely removed the skin from around this antler butt. As you can see, this has all been detached. Now we will finish the other antler. Sometimes these can be tricky to do. It all depends on how the antlers are shaped down here, these antler butts. Sometimes there'll be parts from growing off different angles, so it can be tricky to get this skin out from around them. And a lot of times you may end up cutting this skin don't worry about it. You can sew that back together during the mounting process. I'm going to skin some of this skin back here so we can get at the antler butt a little bit easier. All right, that side's been detached as well. Now we have removed the skin completely from around both antler butts. We are going to Put the deer up on its nose and on its antlers. We're going to start skinning down the rest of the neck, getting the underside. Okay, just skinning down. We want to be careful as we start moving down in this area because we're going to start approaching the eye and we want to be careful when we're skinning that area out so we don't make unnecessary holes around it. Before I do that part, I want to turn this around so I can continue skidding down this side so we're kind of having a level playing field as we move down. I 
again, there's the eye orbit starting. Okay, now we want to position this in a way that's going to make it very easy for us to start skinning out from around the eye. So I want to hold on to this skin. I'm just going to start very carefully making small cuts. As you can see, we have this white membrane right here. We want to come right to the back corner of the eye, carefully cut down. Start getting our finger in here, being careful not to cut it but I actually like putting my finger right through the eye, right through this skin of the eye right here. I'm gonna put my finger right through this. Right like this. That's gonna help keep this skin away as I cut. You can see we're starting to expose the eye, starting to come down to the delicate tear duct area. You wanna take your time when you're skinning this part that's why I put my finger through this eye hole. I can help pull this skin back and keep that skin nice and tight. Now you can start to see the tear duct right here. And we want to cut in at an angle following scraping right along the skull. We, we want to avoid cutting through that if at all possible. That tear duct skin, which is this skin right here, this white skin. This is the tear duct skin. We want to try to keep that intact without cutting through it. If we do cut through it, we can fix that later on during the mounting process, but it makes it a lot easier if we don't cut through it at this point. I'm just gonna scrape right along the skull. All right, now we've passed the tear duct. We've kept it intact and we've skinned this eye completely out. Now we're gonna continue that same process on the other side. Again, we're gonna start pulling this skin down. We're going to carefully make small cuts. Come right in the back corner of the eye, right along the skull, and start cutting through this white membrane. Getting my finger right in there to pull this skin back. We start to see the eye. We're approaching that delicate tear duct area again, and again, I'm just gonna scrape right along the skull. And these, this tear duct kind of angles up and in. So you want to come from the underside, making small, careful cuts. And there we've passed that delicate tear duct area. We've kept it intact. Like I said, if you do cut through it, don't worry about it. We can fix that later on. It's just easier if you don't. I'm going to start now skinning off the rest of the skull. Again, we're meeting up with our first incision from the front. All right, now we've completely removed the skin from the skull. We can now set this aside and either start the fleshing process or freeze it for later fleshing. So we will set this aside and then we will now take our final measurements on the skull and remove the antlers from the skull. All right, now that we have it skinned out, we want to take our final two measurements, which is going to be the B and C measurement. The most important measurement is going to be the C measurement. 
which is going to run right behind the deer's skull, right along the right behind the ears. And we're just going to use this tape measure to do that. So what we want to do is put this underneath and measure this. Come right along behind the ear butts, right behind the skull. That's going to give us 21 inches. So our C measurement is going to be 21 inches. You remember we took the A measurement earlier on in the caping process. That was the I to nose. So now we have the C measurement. And we can also take the B measurement if we want to. Uh, we don't quite have enough there to do it, but this might not hurt just to have a little bit of reference. That's going to give us right around 24-ish. So we'll just go ahead and jot that down just so we have a kind of an idea of what the B measurement might be. But the two most important measurements are the A measurement, which is the eye to nose, and the C, which is right behind the base of the skull. Those are going to be our two key measurements that we will need when we pick out our form. And the B measurement is going to help us with determining how big of a form we need for the rut neck on this deer, as this deer was shot in the prime of the rut. So it's going to have a bigger neck swell than an earlier season deer would. So now that we have those measurements taken, we can start detaching the antlers from the skull. To do that, we're going to take a bone saw and we want to come, oh, I'd say about an inch down from these antler burrs. And we're just going to cut straight down. And if you would cut too much off or if you would leave too much extra, we can trim this during the mounting process so it fits on the form nicely. For now that we've come down about two inches, two and a half inches, we want to take the saw out and we are going to come from behind, come in at an angle a straight angle, kind of halfway between these eye orbits, kind of right in the middle from the back side. So it's going to cut straight across. You want to be careful when you do this that you don't cut through your antler burrs, especially if they drop down farther than a normal deal would. Sometimes that can happen. You also want to try to keep this cut as straight as possible. If it does come out crooked, don't worry about it. We can fix that during the mounting process by shimming up one side. We're just going to keep cutting until we connect with our first cut. Now that we've removed the antlers, we no longer need this skull, so we can discard this. Now we need to take the brain out of the skull cap and start removing all this excess flesh that we don't need on here. So we're just going to take our scalpel and just get rid of this brain. Sometimes this will plop right out during the caping process, make it a little bit easier. And what we're actually going to do, I believe, is we don't need all this excess skull cap right here, so we're going to trim some of that away. All right, now that we've trimmed some of this excess bone and gotten rid of some of that excess flesh from the front, we also made a cut on the back side to remove this extra skull cap that we don't need and this big extra amount of meat that we don't want on there. So we made that cut right along the base of the back of the skull. So now we want to take our scalpel and cut through this excess meat. All this meat along the sides has to go. This can all draw bugs and can rot if that's left on. So you want to make sure that you re remove all of the meat from these, the skull cap. I'm just kind of scraping and cutting right along the bone, get rid of all this meat.
You can put a little bit of borax on there. This is powdered borax. Most supply companies sell this. Put some powdered borax on there just to give yourself some traction. I'm going to keep working around. Start on the other side as well. I'm going to remove all this extra meat. Borax on here for traction. Help us grip on this meat a little bit easier. As you can see, we have some excess meat and membrane on the top of the skull as well. Trim all this off. Make sure that if we left any skin around the antler burrs, that we remove that as well. Just some borax on here for some traction. We also, it's very important that we remove this skull cavity skin and membrane that's in here. To do that, we're just going to take a pliers and pull this membrane right out. borax in there as well. And at this point, we can either continue to scrape and remove all this meat, or if you wanted to, you could boil the skull cap to remove it as well, but we are just going to take our scalpel and just keep removing all this excess meat.